In this problem, we're going to be sketching this region and then convert the polar integral to Cartesian integral um, or a sum of integrals. Okay, so let's see how the region looks like and then we'll figure out how to do that. Now you have to remember that when you have a double integral and it is written in polar, then you know that your dA is going to be r dr d theta. And also when you're training to Cartesian or rectangular uh, and double integral, you have to remember that your dA could be either dy dx or it could be dx dy. So there's two different ways you can write that in rectangular coordinate system. So we're going to come up with a sketch and then see how we're going to convert into Cartesian integrals. So let's take a look at what this is. So since we're integrating respect to r first, that means these are the limit of integration for r and theta is the outer integral. So those are the limit of integration for theta. So let's clearly write them out. So r is going from zero to three and theta is range from pi over two to pi. So if you sketch this region of integration, so here's how it's gonna look like. So r is going from zero to three. So, um, so from here to here, so our radius is three. So, uh, so from here to here or from here to here. So that's a radius of three. And so I'm gonna plot theta first, pi over two to pi. So this, we know this is pi over two, this is pi and r is three. So it's gonna look something like this. So of course this is r is equal to three. So you're just looking at this portion. This is our region of integration r. So that's what we're given in the problem. So hopefully you can see that. Now we're gonna convert this to rectangular coordinate system. So here's how you're gonna do this for one. Um, so I'm gonna set up type one first. So type one meaning we're going to be looking at a cross section that looks vertical like this. So you'll integrate respect to y first and then x. So our dA is gonna be dy dx. So that's type one, which means we'll have to find the bound for x and y. So y is gonna go from zero all the way to the top. So that's gonna be zero all the way to this uh, equation. So we need to find what is the equation of that arc. So if you imagine what this is really is, this is a circle of radius three. We're just looking at one fourth of that circle. So um, if I write the equation of the circle, we're going to get x squared plus y squared is equal to three squared, which is nine. And now you can find the equation in terms of y. So solve for y, you'll have, y is equal to plus and minus the square root of nine minus x squared. So plus gives you the upper half of the circle, minus gives you the lower half of the circle. Now we're looking at the upper half, but one fourth of that. So we're only gonna take um, positive square root of nine minus x squared. So our limit, the upper bound for y will be the positive square root of nine minus x squared. So that's the uh, bound for y. And x will of course go from negative three to zero. So that's pretty straightforward. Hopefully you can see that negative three to zero. So when you rewrite this polar integral in Cartesian, one way you can write it is to write the double integral from negative three to zero, and then from zero to the function square root of nine minus x squared of the inside. So we need to rewrite the inside as well. So this right here, we need to rewrite so dA, we know that it's going to have r dr d theta. So one of the factor from r will belong to dA. So you can rewrite this as r square times sine theta, cosine theta, then r dr d theta, because this is your dA. Now, from these terms, we're gonna rearrange them. Again, rewrite the r square as r times r. So you can also rewrite all of this as r sine theta times r cosine theta. Now, if you remember, this is our definition for y in polar, and this is our definition for x. x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. So when you rewrite or convert everything into rectangular coordinates, what we have in the integrand is x times y times or d or d theta, that's gonna be replaced with dy dx. So that's one way to write it. 
Now, the second way to write it is to uh, reverse the order of integration. So instead of looking at this region as a vertical cross section, we can look at horizontally. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you another setup in the Cartesian coordinate system. So you can write it like this. So if you have that region, uh, instead of making vertical cross sections, we can make horizontal. So let me see if I can delete that. There we go. So we know this is our region of integration. And now we're going to set up dx, dy. So we're going to make horizontal cross section like this. So this is going to be the second option. So your dA is going to be dx, dy. So we need to find new bound for x and new bound for y. So now x is going to range from a function to a function. So it's going to be from this function to uh, that function x equals 0. So the upper bound will be 0. The lower bound, we have to figure out the equation. So again, we're going to get it from this right here. This is our equation. But now we're going to solve for x instead of y. So if you solve this equation for x, you're going to get, again, plus and minus square root of 9 minus y squared. So again, the, the we have two different pieces here. This is the negative square root of that, and this will be the positive square root of that. So we want to be on the left side of the region, so we will take the negative square root of that. So our lower bound for x will be the negative square root of 9 minus y squared. Upper bound is 0. And for y, that's pretty straightforward. You can go from all the way from 0 all the way to that point, which we know is 3. So our uh, bound for y will go from 0 to 3. And now we're ready to set up the integral. So this integral that you see here, which we did dy dx, now we're going to do dx dy. So this integral is also equivalent to writing the integral double integral. So y is going to range from 0 to 3. x is going to go from negative square root of 9 minus y squared. Hopefully you can read that. So let me just show you. All the way to 0 of the same integrand, which was x times y. x times y. Now we're doing dx dy. So that's another way you can write in a rectangular coordinate system. So both of these are equivalent. Okay, so I'm not going to proceed with the integration. I just set them up for you. So hopefully you can finish up the problem. Take care, you guys.